I'm Mick and this is Sally. In our videos we hope to showcase what Australia has to offer. You can follow us on our adventures via the following social media platforms. If you like the video please subscribe to our YouTube channel. The weather forecast today gave us a bit of a reprieve in the cold wet weather that we've been having so we thought we'd take a bit of a drive over and have a look at Warrawee Beach. Now it's only about a two hour drive from Adelaide but oh the day started off foggy and we did wonder whether we were doing the right thing actually going over there today. All the locations that we're going to show you today are found on York Peninsula. After going through Port Wakefield and Ardrossan, we did a right hand turn here and started to head across the peninsula to Minlinton. The Harry Butler Red Devil Memorial can be found at uh, Minlinton as you enter the town. It was in 1919 that Harry Butler flew his aeroplane, the Red Devil over the Gulf of St Vincent from Adelaide to Minlinton on a mail run and uh, that was the first flight over water in the southern hemisphere at the time. Once we had left Minlinton it was only a short drive over towards Port Rickaby and Port Rickaby itself is more of a seaside holiday town than uh, any other town that sort of would be over that way I guess and uh, we thought the weather was clearing up at this stage but when we got in there the longer we were there the worse the weather became and it started to shower but uh, never mind. Um, it has got a caravan park we're actually scooting down the side of the caravan park now as we go down towards the jetty and we had hoped to uh, take a little bit of footage of the caravan park but it was just not the weather to do so, so unfortunately we never got it other than this aerial shot here that we took with the drone. It's only a small caravan park but we have stayed there before and uh, quite a nice caravan park to stay in. As well as the light showers rolling through from time to time while we were here, uh, the wind certainly was up which was a little bit disappointing but even though it was uh, very poor weather, it still made uh, for some lovely views. Like most towns on the York Peninsula, it has its own jetty which is there for fishing and people to use as they want. For those of you that do watch the channel, I did have a bit of success on this trip with the drone. I didn't crash it and I didn't cut my fingers off, so I thought that was pretty good. From Port Rickaby we moved over to Warrelty Beach. Now when you're looking at the road here that we're going along, just bear in mind that we're taking all the coastal shortcut roads from one location to the next. So if we were to go from Adelaide um, across to one of these locations, we wouldn't necessarily and we probably most definitely wouldn't be going on roads like this because these are roads that are going north to south where we'd come across from Adelaide and go from uh, east to west. If however you did decide to go down one of these roads, I'm sure even though there's water on the road like there is today that it wouldn't be an issue because they're well formed roads, they're well maintained and they're a hard gravel bottom so the chances of getting bogged is pretty remote. We're now at the entrance to Warrelty Beach and Warrelty Beach is the whole reason for our drive today. We have been over here before but never stayed here in the caravan so from what I can always remember it was a bit rugged getting into it so we wanted to come over today and have a bit of a look should we ever want to bring the van over in the future. As you drive from the entrance to Warrelty Beach along this road here heading towards the actual beach itself it is a narrow road so if two vans were to meet each other, one on the way in and one on the way out, 
someone has to know how to reverse because you won't get past each other so if you've got someone in the vehicle that can walk in with a handheld UHF radio as long as you've got a UHF radio in the vehicle I guess and act as a spotter that would be the best thing to do. Before we went over to the beach today I did read on wiki camps that there was a lot of seaweed on the beach and it wasn't really uh, suitable for caravans at the moment and that's to be expected at this time of the year but nevertheless that didn't uh, deter us from going over so I thought there might have been more seaweed here than what there was now but uh, no there was no one there of course too cold too windy too wet I guess but uh, yeah ideal location. This is the entry point onto the beach from the road coming down from that uh, top car park area and uh, it is reasonably steep but uh, I guess with a bit of care it's not as uh, much of a jump up at the bottom as what I could recall but certainly manageable to get down there with a van wouldn't be any issue. In the top parking area you can see one van here today um, and there's not a lot of room for vans if you had too many that wanted to park up there but if you don't want to go on the beach and there's room, well this is where you can stay. The access road to the beach there to the left of that sign and there is one other camping area that you can take a camper trailer I guess down here. Uh, not suitable for caravans but uh, if you wanted to go down there with a camper trailer or a tent then that's the spot to go. Warrity Beach on York Peninsula and Paluby Beach on Air Peninsula. Two spots that we must go one time in the caravan when the weather's more suitable. Now with a good picture of Warrity Beach in the back of our minds it was time to move on to Port Victoria. And once again, a dirt road, but uh, Port Victoria is accessible from uh, most locations on a bitumen road, so no need to worry too much about travelling on dirt roads if that's not your forte. The rain clouds were still hanging around with showers coming and going on and off all morning, and uh, it was now middle of the day, and... As we looked at the sky we sort of hoped that it would clear a bit but we were going to have lunch here at Port Victoria but we thought we'd uh, keep moving on and head into Port Hughes and perhaps have some fish and chips when we got down there. Port Victoria has a reasonably long jetty and it also has two caravan parks I believe and uh, it's one location that we've never stopped at for some reason I don't quite know why but Maybe that should also change in the future at some stage. From Port Victoria, it was on to Port Hughes, and as we were travelling towards Port Hughes, we had to go through the town of uh, Maitland, which we're in the main street here now. After exiting the main street, we're going along this road here, which was like driving through an avenue of trees. Very pretty on the day. Within no time at all, we had arrived at Port Hughes, and all these towns on the York Peninsula, they're all within close proximity of each other, so it doesn't take very long to get from one to the other. The last time we stayed at Port Hughes in the caravan, we got fish and chips from the Port Hughes store here. And today we thought we'd dine in and have a dine in meal with fish and chips, and uh, very nice indeed. It's great to be able to listen to the waves breaking on the beach when you're at the seaside. It's a beautiful sound to listen to. Most of the clouds in the sky now have disappeared and it was a beautiful afternoon. Uh, we enjoyed our lunch 
sitting outside in the sunshine with the sun shining on our back, very warm indeed. And uh, it's certainly made for blue water here, as seen with the drone at Port Hughes. With the cloud now gone and the wind dropping right off, if you had a boat out on the water, it'd be a beautiful day for it. From Port Hughes, we went on to Moonta Bay. Now, this was a very short drive, and uh, they're almost a suburb of each other's town. Both Moonta Bay and Port Hughes, and most of the other little towns around that part of York Peninsula, are always busy with tourists, and uh, you can never go there and not see someone walking around. Now looking at the Moonta Bay jetty and for those that are concerned about uh, safety and swimming with the uh, elements out in the water that want to eat you, you can see there in the shot as we come up there's a fenced off area on the side of the jetty and uh, that's for safety for anyone that wants to swim and not get eaten alive I suppose. For me, South Australia is very lucky to have so much pretty coastline within uh, a very short distance of Adelaide. Alongside Moonta Bay is the town of Moonta and they do have an RV rest area. It's a 48 hour maximum stay and they do ask for a donation should you want to stay there. It certainly is a very large area so accommodating any sort of numbers wouldn't be a problem at all. After leaving Moonta we started to head inland towards the town of Butte and here we we're going to have a look at the silo art now. This silo art apparently has only just been completed in the recent weeks. Now I'm no art critic, but I've really got to take my hat off to artists that uh, have got the ability to paint a painting of such a large scale. It's a real credit that they can uh, do such a thing and keep everything in uh, relationship to uh, size of images that's within the painting. Well this brings us to the end of this video so we hope you have enjoyed what we've presented to you and until we can get the next video up on the channel you look after yourself and take care. If you like the video that you just watched, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of our videos, hit the subscribe button. And once you've done that, tap on the bell and change the notification to all. That way every time we do uploads to our YouTube channel, you'll be notified.